Hello again, Biology 300 students. Um, Mr. Parker here, and um, we are continuing on with the, taking a closer look at the central dogma of molecular biology. Um, you should have your notes out. Uh, the new um, the packet I've given you on uh, DNA replication, and also you should have your um, whole entire packet out uh, about DNA and protein synthesis. And um, in this screencast, being segment number three, we're going to look at specifically at the idea of DNA replication. So you should um, be ready to go, be prepared, have something to write with, and uh, let's go ahead and get started here. Um, so looking at the central dogma, a lot of people had questions, what's a dogma? It's kind of like a, uh, um, a doctrine or a, um, you know, a, a certain belief of what's going on. Okay? So that's kind of what we're looking at, the, the belief or the, um, the system that we're looking at of molecular biology. Okay? And you can see in this diagram here, looking at this, uh, what we're taking a look at today is just the idea of um, DNA replication, as you can see. Okay, um, so we're looking at DNA replication, and eventually we'll get into the idea of transcription and translation. But I would definitely write down or jot down this little diagram so you have it. And um, basically, what it does is describes the flow of the genetic information from DNA to RNA, and eventually to the idea of what protein synthesis is. And um, DNA replication is very important for the ideas of creating um, new cells. Okay, and then also for the idea of eventually, you know, within protein synthesis. And uh, there's something called transcription and translation, and these two areas we're actually going to get into um, second semester. So the main thing that we're going to learn about today is this idea of DNA replication, basically the replicating of the DNA um, in order to go through the process of mitosis um, during the cell cycle uh, that we'll be taking a look at. Okay, so moving forward from here, Okay, looking at the idea of DNA replication, you can see in this diagram here, um, what we have here is our, initially we have our um, DNA molecule, okay, or what we refer to as the parent DNA, okay, and then you can see the uh, two separate strands that have occurred, all right, and there's an enzyme that basically is going to unwind these and unzip this, and we'll get that there in a second. And what it creates is basically, as you can see here, we have a parent as the template, and then we have two new daughter uh, strands of DNA. Okay, and there's a term here that you really need to know. It's called semi-conservative. And in a semi-conservative DNA strand, what it's basically telling you is that as you look here, we have kind of the blue structure here. Um, we have one strand of old on the new strands you can see here and then we have one strand that is new and you can see those that's occurring so basically semi-conservative means you have one new strand one old strand and in the idea of DNA replication these two new strands that are being formed are exact copies of each other each other exactly alike okay so the daughter strands are exact copies of the original parent strand so we went from one to do two obviously duplicating it all right, so step number one is called initiation. Okay, so we need to go through the process of initiation. And looking at this diagram here, you can see um, this enzyme here is an important enzyme that you have on your notes that you need to know. Um, remember that all enzymes end in this idea of uh, or the, the ending um, case or ACE, A-S-E ending. Okay, so the DNA helicase unwinds and unzips okay, the DNA. Okay, you can see you know, what it does is it creates this replication fork. So you have the replication of fork that's occurring here and also here looking at the diagram. Okay? And they create these bubbles. That's why replication can occur so fast is because um, the DNA does not, um, your DNA just doesn't have one replication fork. There's multiple replication forks, so DNA can occur fairly quickly. And as you get into some of the lower order organisms like bacteria, they have thousands upon thousands of DNA replication forks. That's why DNA replicates so fast compared to, say, our, um, you know, the human's DNA compared to the bacteria DNA. Um, but DNA replicates quickly because of these replication or, or these bubbles that you can see. And you can see here's our original strand. We create these bubbles, and eventually we get our two daughter DNA molecules, which are exact copies of each other. So again, you need to know that the initiation, you have a helicase, and it helps unwind and unzips okay, this process. Okay, so the next step, what we need to have happen is we go through the idea of elongation. 
Okay, and the elongation basically we have an, um, another enzyme you can see again with the ending, the EASE ending, is DNA polymerase. Okay, and what the DNA polymerase is, it is basically proofreads okay, um, the new nucleotides that are being added to the DNA strand. Um, so it's going to proofread, and you can see here it talks about the idea of um, 3 prime to 5 prime. You don't really necessarily need to know that right now. Um, but basically, you, know, you need to know that the DNA polymerase is a proofreading uh, mechanism that um, is found within your DNA. Basically, what it's doing is it's looking for mistakes. So if there was an A there in your DNA that was uh, instead of a T and it should have been a T, then your DNA polymerase can go in there and hopefully help fix it. Okay? And then that way it will reduce the number of mistakes by a large number. Okay? And so the main thing that you need to get out of this is what DNA polymerase is. It's a proofreading mechanism or enzyme that helps reduce the amount of mistakes as you add the new complementary nucleotides to the new strands. Okay, and looking at this again, I'm going to go back here. Um, you can see, again, the polymerase is just on here again. The only thing that you basically need to know out of this again is that that is adding the new nucleotides, it's proofreading it, okay? And uh, you don't even need to know these two terms, but by what they do by adding new, the new nucleotides, okay, creates these what we call Oka Okazaki fragments, um, and these fragments have to be put together eventually. But again, DNA polymerase, proofreading mechanism found within the DNA to help um, reduce the number of mistakes, okay? So continue on with that. As you can see, the DNA unwinds some more and leading strand is extended. So again, the polymerase, as you can see, it's unwinding. The helicase, is, the helicase enzyme unzips and unwinds. The polymerase comes in and helps add these nucleotides and fix the mistakes so there's no more mistakes that's occurring. Okay, the third step then of DNA replication would be termination. All right, and as you can see here, Okay, we have termination that occurs, and um, a different type of DNA polymerase removes some of these what we call RNA um, primers. Um, but the main thing you need to know here, um, again, what happens is this helicase okay, comes back in and helps unwind and unzip. That originally helped unwind and unzip the molecule. Well, now what it does is it helps rewind it back up. Okay, so that's that would be the ending part of your uh, DNA replication is when that helicase returns and it helps um, uh, rewind it so it's able to go fit back into um, in the structure that it needs to be. All right, and looking at just some basic summary facts. Okay, this is obviously a very quick um, screencast on DNA replication, but if you look at some of the summary facts here. Um, in humans, DNA polymerase adds about 50 nucleotides per second. Okay, so every second there's a new nucleotide. Remember, your nucleotides are your um, your nitrogen base, your phosphate group, and then your um, your sugar, your five carbon sugars. So they add about 50 of those every second. So then your DNA polymerase can proofread this, okay, and it also is so it's able to insert um, the corrections that it needs to. So as you can see here, one in every 10,000 bases are in air. So if you think about it, you know, you're, there's an air every 10,000 base that's added. And what your, um, your polymerase does, it comes in and fixes that. So from instead of having one in every 10,000, there becomes one in every 10 a million because of the polymerase. And that eliminates a lot of these mutations that occur, um, that could occur um, due to the fact of the um, you know your DNA polymerase that you have. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit from the PowerPoint here, uh, real quick, and I'm going to show you um, a little uh, video. Okay, pulled off of YouTube. So uh, sit here and pay attention. Um, you don't really need to take notes, but it's going to animate for you on, on the whole process of what replication is. Using computer animation based on the latest research. We are now able to see how DNA is actually copied in living cells. You are looking at an assembly line of amazing miniature biochemical machines that are pulling apart the DNA double helix and cranking out a copy of each strand. The DNA to be copied enters the production line from bottom left. The whirling blue molecular machine is called helicase. 
It spins the DNA as fast as a jet engine as it unwinds the double helix into two strands. One strand is copied continuously and can be seen spooling off to the right. Things are not so simple for the other strand because it must be copied backwards. It is drawn out repeatedly in loops and copied one section at a time. The end result is two new DNA molecules. Okay, so that was a little idea of DNA replication. Um, maybe to kind of give you a visual of what happens and how it occurs. Uh, what I'd like to do with you real quick is if you could pull out um, your um, in your packet, if you're looking in your packet here, and what I would like to do is go ahead and do a little, um, filling out a little diagram with you, okay? So in your packet, if you can uh, take out page uh, 61, okay, in your packet on DNA replication, and we're going to go ahead and take a quick little look at this and just make sure that you can um, get some of the information that I want down. So looking at this on page 61, all right, you have your, as you can see it, this is basically step one, which we know is as initiation. Okay, and remember in initiation, what happens is there's this DNA helicase, and remember that's your enzyme. Okay, and your enzyme is going to unwind and unzip the DNA. Okay, so it's going to unwind and unzip the DNA and it creates what we call this replication fork. And at that replication fork, that's where your um, new nucleotides are going to be added. Okay, so that's, in, in, that's the idea. That's step number one, the initiation. And step two was the elongation. Okay, and you can see in step two in elongation, you have your DNA polymerase, which is another enzyme. Okay, and if you remember what the DNA polymerase does here, it helps proofread okay it helps proofread as those nucleotides are being added the complementary base nucleotides are being added remember there's about 50 of those that happen per second the DNA is able to proofread help fix those mistakes so going from maybe one in every 10,000 to maybe one in every 10 million due to the fact of your polymerase and then in the third step here which is your termination Okay, remember your helicase is back, and that helps rewind. Okay, that helps rewind your um, DNA molecule. And remember now, what we have these are these are basically complementary to each other. Okay, or exact copies. All right, so they're exact copies of each other. Um, Remember, these are, these are referred to as your daughter strands, and over here was your original parent strand of uh, DNA. Okay, And so at the end result, the basic end result of DNA replication is that we have two identical, okay, as you can see here, two identical copies of this DNA molecule. Okay, So just kind of going back to the ideas that we had with uh, DNA replication, Okay, remember what we were doing is we were looking to get this idea of going from one parent to two or two um, daughter cell, daughter strands are exact copies of each other. Okay, so um, this was segment three of the central dogma on DNA replication, screencast number three of DNA replication.